Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, we have a U.S. Navy Bureau of Ordnance Air Supply Unit Mark I Model Zero. I have no idea what this is aside from that. I have no idea what it does other than it supplies air. But it's a big, cool looking thing and we're going to figure it out. So let's start taking things apart. I'm going to start by taking what I believe is the input and output. Don't go away. I'm going to take the input and output plugs out because if there's any kind of pressure in here, I would like that to not explode in my face. Would be nice. Yeah, long since dead. Oh, wow, that one comes out finger tight. Cool. So if nothing else, I just got a pair of half inch plugs. And that's going to be a filter. Ha -ha. I'm going to say this is a filter and maybe a lifting eye point. Nut, lock washer, washer. It's nice to work on something substantial where things like, you know, you have parts and it comes right apart in your hand. No, you're going to be a bother. All right. Gasket right there. Thank you. I'm going to need that before we're done. Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. Ooh, that's nice. That's a sexy filter. Oh, it's got a little indicator inside. You can see in the end there, the crystals, when they turn, uh, uh, it's here when they turn blue or pink. Yeah, replace, these, these start out blue when they're dry. And this is a filter and dryer cartridge. Um, it absorbs moisture, and when the crystals inside turn pink, they're saturated with moisture as much as they can take, and you have to take it out and replace it. Some of them, you can simply bake this in an oven, and it recharges them. Guys who have, like, gun safes and stuff have things like that. It's pretty common. So that's a really cool little sub-assembly there. Hmm. All right, that's neat. Um, this ends a motor, so I'm going to go in this side and see what we can see going in here. This will take a minute. I'm just going to do this and not say anything so that we can get to the other side of the 50 little screws and I'll talk then. Okay, so we got all those off. Now, Oh, wow. Oh, this is cool. All right, this is surprisingly cooler than I expected. It's a pump, and you can see we've got a central shaft here, a crankshaft, and then the two output sides. So what I'm going to do before we go any further is I'm going to see if we can make it work. Let's see. Yeah! It wants 115 volts at 60 cycles, so... Ah! 
I'm going to see if we can make it work. This, this could be cool. Let's open up the back end. This is obviously the motor. And we're going to need those. This could be a really cool demonstration. I may not completely gut this. We may let this live so that it can be a working demonstration because it's really cool. Ah, there it is. Okay. So I'm like, I had one. I just set it down. Save those right next to each other in the cup. Now, given that there's a gland here, I think this is the patch area for the electrical connections. Oh, God, look at how easy this is. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay, I think... If I take this and go over here, how many amps do you want? I'll bet it's not a lot. A third of a horsepower. I don't know how many amps that is, but I don't think it's that many. I think it's pretty light duty. I think this will be okay. You tell me which is hot and which is not. Nope, I just got one, two, three. Okay, well, we'll put those on there. Chooches. All right, power off. Let's tilt it down. Uh, let's see if we can see it move. Okay, you ready? Let's see if we can make this work. Oh, that is so cool. So it's got a hiccup to it as I come up in the, uh, in the speed there. Wires aren't warm or anything. There's only two terminals, and it's working, so I know I'm doing it right. But if I bring the power up... It's doing better now. I think we just had to wear it in a little bit. Now let's take a look at what we're actually seeing here, because this is really cool. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how deep I want to tear this down, because it's really easy to make this work. Like I could just wire a computer power cord on the end of this, just a standard IEC plug, and this thing will just work just fine. So what we've got, and this is actually pretty simple, is on the back, back here, we've got a big motor, and it's just a standard Single phase, 120 volt, uh, 60 cycle motor, nothing special. And then this big container is the crankcase. And we've got two air fittings. And these are cast in down here. So this will be our inlet. No, this is our inlet back here. And this will be our outlet here. So air is sucked in here and goes out here. And there's a crankshaft with two 180 degree horizontally opposed pistons. You can see there's a piston and there's a piston. And I don't know if those are diaphragm or what. 
it looks like it might be like a diaphragm type motor. Let's take a cylinder head off and see what we can see in there. We'll go that far in, which really is all, the, I mean, it's just, that's a motor. We've taken apart a million motors. And uh, all the interesting parts are gonna be right here in the cylinder head. So we'll take the cylinder head off and get a real look inside and see what we can learn. We're gonna wanna keep these all together because we wanna be able to put the cylinder head back on. I wonder if this is a diaphragm pump or if it's got like reed valves in it or something. I don't know. Okay, let's take this off delicately. I need this to pop off and it's not. I don't want to take this off because I think this is valves and delicate stuff. I want this to just pop right off. I don't really have anything to grab onto effectively. You are exactly what I want for this. Let's see if I can separate that. you to pop apart. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, I'll turn this around over here so you can see. So there's a, oh wow, look at that. So little tiny valves and this looks to be a diaphragm. Let's move it and see what it does. But I'm pretty sure this is gonna stay still and the center part's gonna move in and out. Yep. That's kind of cool. So it's a, it's a diaphragm type pump. And there's our diaphragm. And when it goes in, air is drawn in. Well, this is our inlet side. So air goes in here, out this hole, and then into this space. And when air comes in, one of these moves this is the inlet side because you can see there's holes here and a little spring behind them. Let me grab a pokey bit. Watch this. That's a valve there and this is a valve and they're opposite. So on the other side of this there will be a spring and if I push on this you can see that moves. So air comes in through this hole here and when the diaphragm gets sucked this way because remember this is sealed around here. So when the diaphragm goes in, it draws air into the space here, and this valve opens, right? So now our space is full of air. And when we start pushing back out, this valve closes, because this will only let air come in, not out. This valve will let air go out, because we can push it open, but not in. So when the piston comes back out and is pushing against this, the volume in here decreases and the air is put under pressure and this valve closes, this valve opens and the air goes out through here and then out through here, then out through there, through the casting, up into this space. Then it gets forced. Once it's up into that space, it comes into here, gets forced through this dryer and then goes out there. So that's our output. So now we know what it is, how it works and why. Let's see if we can put it back together again and make it work. I think we can. And I think we'll know it's working because I'll be able to put my hand here and feel pressure. So it's a pretty easy test. I'm going to start by putting the cylinder head back on. 
And I got to make sure I got it lined up right because these are my holes and those are my holes. So. And then we have washer, lock washer, nut. Okay. Now I don't have to close this to do an initial test, so we're cool there. I do have to put this in. It doesn't appear to matter which way it goes. Mill spec. Okay, at this point, we should be able to fire it up. And if it works right, I'll be able to get pressure here. Let's find out. Oh yeah. It totally works. It moves a substantial amount of air. This is really cool. So that's as deep into it as I'm going to go because that's deep enough that we can explore all the mechanisms and everything that works and how it works and all that jazz. But I haven't destroyed it yet because it's actually kind of cool and I want to see if we can do something useful with this. It's a, a low pressure air compressor that has a nice filter dryer set up. Comment in with good ideas for what we can do with this. I'm sure it's got an application. It's kind of, it, it's like a high volume, low pressure kind of thing. I think this was for breathing air. I, I get the, the feeling this was for breathing air, maybe in an aircraft or something, like cabin air or something like that. I don't know. It's interesting. It's really neat. And I'd like to know more about its history. So this is what I know. It's a U.S. Navy Bureau of Ordnance Air Supply Unit, LD, number 133121. It's a Mark I Model Zero, and it was manufactured by the Crosley Division of the Avco Manufacturing Corporation in Cincinnati, Ohio. Judging by the looks of it, I'm going to say it's probably 1960s-ish, 70s maybe? I don't know. But teach me about it. I want to know. Comment below and let us know. Teach, teach me about this. This is really cool. And uh, keep an eye out for this, like in the Captain's blog or other Geekert videos. You'll probably see this doing something cool in the near future. So that's today's autopsy. Thank you guys for hanging out. And as always, we'll see you next time.